Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move to present-day Kidder County, North Dakota, in what was called the Dakota Territories for the Battle of Big Mound on July 24, 1863. The attacking force was commanded by Union Brigadier General Henry Hastings Sibley, who at the age of 17 had left his home of Detroit for Salt St. Marie to become a fur trader for the American Fur Company. Sibley commanded more than 2,000 Union soldiers along with more than 60 Native American scouts, including members of the Sioux Tribe along with 100 artillery pieces, all part of the 1st Minnesota Mounted Rangers. Defending was the War Chief Ink Paduda Wapakute Band of Dakota. I so apologize for my pronunciations. His translated name was Red End, Red Cap, or Scarlet Point, depending on the translation. Red Cap was badly scarred from the smallpox he survived as a child and would be one of the chiefs who would flee to Canada with Sitting Bull during the Native American Wars in 1870s. Red Cap was accompanied by Standing Buffalo, whom unfortunately I could find very little about. Under their command were approximately 1,300 Native Americans. Today's victory, if you could call it that, would go to the Union. In August of 1862, Minnesota Governor Alexander Ramsey requested Sibley to command a force of Union soldiers to lead a punishment expedition against Native Americans associated with the Santee Raids. The Santee members were comprised of four Sioux tribes. It should be noted that many members of the Sioux tribes did not want to participate in what was referred to as the Santee Raid. Originally assigned more than 3,300 soldiers, Sibley discovered his forces were too big to move quickly and were unable to locate Santee Raiders due to the heat, drought, and lack of potable water. Sibley was told in July of 1863 by local buffalo hunters comprised mostly of Metis Chippewa of a location of a large group of 600 Santee lodges. Sibley took a portion of his troops, consisting of 2,000 Union soldiers and 60 scouts, believing there shouldn't be more than 1,000 to 1,500 Native warriors. He believed his troops, plus the 100 artillery pieces, should be more than enough. Sibley reached Santee Camp on July 24th and noted that most of the members were peaceful Sisseton who were led by Standing Buffalo. The chief had not joined Little Crow's uprising earlier in the year. Sibley paused and set up camp, sending scouts to meet the Dakota members. The Union scouts were joined by Dr. Josef Weiser, a physician from St. Paul who could speak the different Dakota languages. Dr. Weiser had recognized several of his Sisseton friends in the Santee group and believed this would be a peaceful encounter. Most of the Native Americans present were not part of any of the raiders. Unfortunately for both groups, Red Cap and some of his men had infiltrated a peaceful group of Sisseton. During the meeting, Tall Crown, a member of Red Cap's group, walked up behind Dr. Weiser and shot him in the heart killing the surgeon instantly. Panic erupted among both the Union and Native tribal members, and while most of the Native Americans present were not part of the raids, no one understood why the gunfire had started and thus began a firefight between the Union soldiers and the tribal members present. The battle was never going to be in the Santee's favor. Less than half of the Native Americans had weapons, and those that did had weapons of poor quality and low ammunition. After all, this group was not originally the raiding group Sibley was searching for. The main portion of the Union soldiers saw the firefight break out in the camp and immediately called to action. Driving forward under the cover of artillery barrage, the Union soldiers devastated the tribesmen, forcing them to retreat, leaving their supplies behind so they could protect their women and children. Sibley camped for the night at the lodges, destroying the supplies and planning to pursue the women and children. Fortunately for the Santee, though, Sibley received an order that sent him by mistake that night back to their base 12 miles away, given the Santee time to retreat. Losses were low, the Union troops suffered 3 killed, 4 wounded for a total of 7 casualties. Sibley reported they had killed and wounded 80 Native Americans, and so that is the official tally. However, Sibley's personal journal said that they had only killed 9. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. 